Former Washington Post reporter Felicia Sanmez has been fired from the Washington Post. That's why I say she's a former reporter with them. She was a national political reporter who had caused a kerfuffle recently after she made a big deal out of a joke that was retweeted by one of her male colleagues, Dave Weigel. Now this saga felt like it was endless, but it has come to an end. But before I get to the email that she was given, letting her know that she was being fired, I do want to get to the context. So for any of you who might have missed it, I'll get you back up to speed. So it all started when Dave Weigel had retweeted this honestly lame joke, okay? Every girl is bi, you just have to figure out if it's polar or sexual. Now Weigel tweeted it. And immediately after that, Sanmez made it clear she didn't like the tweet. She wrote, fantastic to work with the news outlet or at a news outlet where retweets like this are allowed. And what Weigel did immediately after that was the right thing. He did away with the retweet. He apologized both internally and publicly. And it wasn't enough for Sanmez because she kept complaining about it and complaining about the environment over at the Washington Post. And eventually it was reported that Weigel would be suspended for a month with no pay. I thought that was ridiculous, we talked about it on the show. But even after that happened, the attacks toward other Washington Post reporters continued in a very public fashion, it happened on Twitter. Um, for instance, anyone who had defended Dave Weigel uh, would have to deal with the criticisms of Felicia Sanmez. Uh, for instance, here is one example where she uh, has screenshots of the tweets that she disagrees with and says, these tweets falsely accu accusing me of clout chasing, bullying, cruelty, and directing an eager mob to carry out a barrage of online abuse are still up, even after I repeatedly raised them to management and noted that I've been receiving threats and abuse. And Jose Del Real is one of her colleagues. They were going at it on Twitter. But something that really caught my attention and bothered me a lot was this tweet. And by the way, let me just note that she blocked me. I've never communicated with her directly, but she didn't like our coverage on this. So sorry to hurt your feelings, but this is how I feel. Um, you know, she wrote, I don't know who the colleagues anonymously disparaging me in the media reports are, but I do know that the reporters who issued synchronized tweets this week downplaying the post workplace issues have a few things in common with each other. Now let's get to the next tweet, and this is what caught my attention and bothered me, okay? They are all white. All right, let's just pause right here. Okay, so if your colleagues have a point of view that differs from your own, their points don't matter, their perception doesn't matter, their lived experience doesn't matter because they're white. And what she was specifically referring to are the female reporters at the Washington Post who's, who just openly said, I've had a great experience at the Washington Post, basically countering Sanmez's claims, right? But they shouldn't have done that because they're white women and white women apparently don't matter. Their perception of the workplace doesn't matter at all, not even a little bit. I'm curious what Sanmez's reaction would be if those reporters weren't white. By the way, Felicia Sanmez, I don't know what her background is. One of the most white passing women I've ever seen in my life. So what are you talking about? Yeah. Okay. So look, um, I'm certainly more brown than Felicia Sonmez uh, in color, in hue, right? Uh, I don't, I ethnically, I don't know if we're a tie. I don't know what it is, but this conversation is absurd. Uh, but I do run a media network, so I'm curious what her standard is. Am I allowed to ignore all white people at work? I mean, it's oh, you had a thought about how it is to work here, but you're white. Felicia Sonmez tells me I should ignore what you think. It's not important at all. That's absurd. How could you not see that that's absurd? No, this is like the I don't I don't know that this is anywhere on the political spectrum. But whatever it is, we're against it. And so so they they fired her. We'll get talk more about that in a second. And guys, look. We don't know all the details. She's in the middle of a lawsuit. I'm sure she'll quadruple down on that lawsuit now, right? And everybody's gonna lawyer, she hasn't said anything on Twitter since. Because now, before they fired her, she's constantly attacking her colleagues, right? 
and and it's their fault and it's partly because they because of their race it's partly because of their they make too much money etc cetera, etc cetera, right they the management keeps telling you stop doing that publicly we're not saying that you can't talk about it and we can't resolve it internally but please stop attacking everyone that you work with publicly right she says no i'm above the law she keeps doing it it's almost like she's goading them to fire her they do all of yeah. a sudden she stopped tweeting because now she's talking to lawyers, right? And lawyers like, okay, good, good, good. We got him where we want him. Don't tweet anymore. It could incriminate you. And then they're gonna do a giant lawsuit. Maybe in that lawsuit, we'll find out she was right. I don't know. I don't know the okay. internal dealings of the Washington Post. But right now, it doesn't in. look good. I gotta jump in because I was curious about the lawsuit. I'm like, okay, well, I wanna make sure I'm informed on, on what I'm saying here. And if she had allegations that could be credible, I wanna make sure that we share those allegations on the show. Her allegation was that the Washington Post was discriminating against her because she specifically wanted to do coverage on accusations of like sexual misconduct. And so since she didn't get the assignment that she wanted, she claimed that it was discrimination. And the judge threw that case out because she failed to provide evidence demonstrating that the Washington Post had, in fact, um, you know, discriminated against her by not assigning her to the uh, you know topic that she wanted to report on. She's going to appeal it. So when Jenks says she's in the middle of a lawsuit, uh, she's not giving up. She's uh, appealing that decision, and so we'll see where that goes. Uh, but. What I've noticed, and some might feel uncomfortable with me saying this, but I'm gonna say it because it's what I genuinely think and it's what I have seen and to some extent even experienced. Using gender or using race and weaponizing it for career aspirations is disgusting and it's not okay. Okay, so you didn't get the assignment you wanted, claiming that you didn't get it because of discrimination is ridiculous. And apparently, the judge who threw out her case also found that to be ridiculous. Anna, that's a great point, and I think you're I think you're spot on. And clearly, to me, Felicia Sanmez was more concerned about herself than the Washington Post as an institution, and felt that she was better than them or above them, or that the Washington Post had been so terrible in her eyes that she wanted to protect her own. I don't know, reputation, it comes across as insubordination and she gets fired. But I think the irony is, and look, this is coming from somebody who I've worked at organizations where I felt like my principles were at stake and I needed to separate myself from that organization. So I get it, but there's a, but we're talking about the Washington Post. You're not talking about you know Fox News or Breitbart. This is the Washington Post and to not be able to follow the managing editor's instructions, stop attacking your colleagues publicly. It's simple and she keeps doing it. It almost like it makes the Dave Weigel joke and it was a terrible joke. But here's an example of somebody who actually does seem now to have mental health issues, which is the terrible joke that Dave Weigel was saying to begin with. Mm. Yeah, no. Well, I, go ahead, Jane. Yeah, I don't know about any of that. And I, let let the appeal go forward. She'll make her case and, and we'll, you know, and let the courts uh, decide it. But I, I, there's two things that bother me. One is what you guys were talking about originally about everything has to be involved with gender or race. No, like so when I left MSNBC, I could have been like, oh, they did it because I'm Muslim. But that's not what happened, right? So not everything has to be racial. Not everything has to be about your background. And so it's, it's and oftentimes it is, by the way, but sometimes it isn't. And by the way, that's why they have courts, etc. But right now we're in the court of public opinion. And and look, I've told this story before in relation to Sonmez. When I was at MSNBC, the Phil Griffin, the head of the station, said George Scarborough had complained that I was criticizing him and for me to not do it anymore. Well, I worked for them, I had a contract with them, so I listened to that. I I don't like Joe Scarborough, I criticized him before, I criticized him after, I criticized a little bit during, <laughs> not on MSNBC's there, but on, on Young Turks a little bit. Uh, but overall, I listened to it because I had a contract with them. I, I worked for them, right? So it's not too much to ask for when your boss says, hey, don't do that, that you follow that. And it, asking you to follow normal instructions by your manager is not racism. It's just called having a job. And, and, and that leads me to my second point. Look, the, there's different kinds of employees everywhere, right? And so, and, and, the, and the employees that are sometimes the loudest voices, 
and that leave in spectacular fashion, right? Say, oh, this is a terrible employee, et cetera, et cetera. And by the way, oftentimes they're right. And sometimes they're totally wrong. And when they are, a lot of times, other people that work at that company go, wait a minute, that isn't my experience at all. So he doesn't represent me or she doesn't represent me. The part that bothered me the most was when Sonmas came back and said, no, none of your opinions count. I don't care right. what kind of experience you had at Washington Post. I don't care if you're a woman. I don't care what you are. None of your experiences count. Only my experience counts. Well, exactly. No, absurd.